If you believe your bank tells you everything you need to know, think again. They often don't and I'll explain it as simply as possible in this video. As of 2019, 94.6% of US households, about 124.2 million people, owned a checking or savings account and 72.5% held a bank credit card or personal loan. Considering banks' central role in our daily lives, it's crucial to understand how they operate to make sound financial choices. However, banks might not always lay all their cards on the table. They have certain practices they'd prefer you didn't know about, and overlooking these can jeopardize your financial journey. Wondering what these are? In this video, we'll pull back the curtain on some of the banking industry's best kept secrets about money. Without further ado, let's dive in. Secret number one, the right of offset. Banks have a provision known as the right of offset or set off, which gives them the authority to retrieve money from one of your accounts to settle a debt from another account, provided both accounts are within the same institution. This capability ensures that banks can recover outstanding debts from customers using their own funds available with the bank. For instance, let's say you have a car loan and a checking account with the same bank. If you neglect or forget to make a payment on the car loan, the bank can automatically withdraw the due amount from your checking account to cover the loan payment. Without direct action from your end, the bank ensures the loan stays current by using your own funds. When you initiate a relationship with a bank, like opening a new account, you usually sign an agreement that dictates the terms of use for that account. The right of offset provision is often included in this agreement. However, how this provision is described might differ from one bank to another, so it's essential to read and understand the terms when setting up an account. Secret number two, banks are open to negotiation. Like many other industries, the banking sector is competitive, which can work to your advantage. It's easy to think of banks as rigid institutions, but in reality, they are keen on retaining their customers. This willingness stems from the intense competition they face from other financial institutions. If you encounter an overdraft fee, know that these charges can often be contested. Banks are generally open to discussions regarding fees and might even reverse them to maintain a good relationship with their customers. This approach isn't limited to banks. Credit card companies operate similarly. For instance, you can request a one-time late fee waiver if you've missed a monthly payment. Also, given the competitive nature of banking, implying that you might consider switching to a different institution can sometimes give you an edge in negotiations. If you're hit with several overdraft fees or aren't satisfied with the terms, hinting at the possibility of taking your business elsewhere might make the bank more accommodating. Beyond fees, even aspects like credit card annual percentage rates can be up for discussion. If you believe you're being charged a high interest rate, contact your provider to negotiate a more favorable rate. After all, it's in the best interest of financial institutions to keep their customers satisfied and loyal. Secret number three, you may be liable for fraudulent transactions. Unauthorized charges on your credit card known as fraudulent transactions, pose a significant threat to your financial health. Even with protective measures in place, it's essential to understand your potential liabilities in such scenarios. According to federal law, if your card is lost or stolen and you report it immediately before any unauthorized transactions, you're generally not held responsible for any charges made without your permission. The timing of your report affects how much you might owe. If you notify the bank within two business days of losing your card, you might be responsible for up to $50 in unauthorized charges. Should you delay this report and only notify your bank about the loss between two and 60 days after getting your statement, your liability can skyrocket to $500. So monitoring your account regularly is essential ideally every day. If you notice any unauthorized charges or your card is missing, immediately report it to your bank or credit card company. 
This will minimize potential financial losses and aid the bank in taking timely action, such as blocking the card or investigating suspicious activities. Secret number four, credit unions may offer better rates on loans. Unlike traditional banks, which prioritize profits for shareholders, credit unions are not for profit. This means they put their members' needs first. Any profit they make is typically reinvested into the institution or returned to members through reduced fees, lower interest rates, or other benefits. As a member, you're not just a customer. You have a say in the union's decisions and benefit directly from its profits. One of the primary advantages of using a credit union is the potential for better loan rates. With typically reduced overhead costs, credit unions can offer lower interest rates on various financial products such as loans, mortgages, and credit cards. Essentially, you could pay less fees over time than if you borrowed from a conventional bank. Over time, this saves you money that can go into investments, vacations, or whatever your heart desires. Furthermore, credit unions might have fewer account fees, making them an attractive option for many consumers. Despite these potential benefits, it remains essential for individuals to exercise diligence. When applying for a loan or mortgage, or considering any financial product, it's always wise to compare offers from various lenders to ensure you're getting the best deal possible. Secret number five, you don't have to opt in to overdraft protection. Overdraft protection is a banking feature that allows transactions, whether they are debit card purchases or automatic payments, to proceed even if you don't have enough funds in your account. It's designed to prevent declined transactions, ensuring your payments and purchases continuity. While overdraft protection may sound beneficial, it does come with a price. Banks may charge high fees, sometimes reaching up to $35 every time they cover an overdraft for you. And it's not just a one-time fee. If you make multiple transactions that exceed your account balance in a single day, you might face numerous fees which can quickly add up. To avoid unexpected overdrafts and the associated fees, you should monitor your bank account regularly. Set up text or email alerts with your bank to get instant notifications whenever your balance is low, allowing you to transfer funds or hold off on transactions that could result in an overdraft. Furthermore, last year, several prominent banks, including Bank of America and Capital One, announced intentions to decrease or even eliminate these charges to ensure more consumer-friendly practices. Secret number six, depositing a bounced check can cost you money. When you deposit a check, you trust it's valid and the issuer has enough funds to cover it. However, if the check bounces due to inadequate funds, this can disrupt your financial plans and lead to unexpected issues and expenses. If you act on the belief that the check is good and use some or all of the deposited money, you could find yourself in a bind when the check is returned. Not only will you need to pay back the amount you've spent, but you might also incur overdraft fees if the returned check pushes your account balance into the negative. This means you'll end up owing more than the original amount of the bounced check. In addition to potential overdraft fees, banks often have specific fees associated with processing returned checks. This means that by merely attempting to deposit a bad check, you could be hit with a returned check fee. It's worth noting, however, that while these fees can be cumbersome, some banks offer ways to waive overdraft fees under certain conditions or through specific account protections. Secret number seven, deposits aren't always available right away. One might assume the funds become instantly available when depositing money into a bank or credit union. However, this isn't always the case. In reality, each financial institution has its own rules regarding the time it takes for a deposit to clear and for the funds to become accessible. Federal law states that banks must make deposited funds available within a reasonable amount of time. This time frame can take up to two days or even longer for deposits over $5,000 or those made at third-party banks or ATMs. Moreover, the rise of digital banking and the use of mobile apps for financial transactions have significantly transformed the banking sector. 
These technological advancements have led to variations in how quickly deposit funds become available. While mobile apps deposits offer convenience, their processing times can differ from traditional methods such as ATMs or in-branch deposits. This inconsistency can confuse users, especially those using digital and traditional banking methods. So if you use multiple methods for depositing funds, you must familiarize yourself with your bank's deposit policies. Understanding these timelines can help you effectively manage your finances, ensuring they don't unintentionally bounce checks or incur overdraft fees due to assuming funds are available when they aren't. Secret number eight, paying off a loan early may cost you more. Paying off loans early using any extra money might seem like a wise financial decision. After all, clearing debt often brings a sense of relief and financial freedom. However, this isn't always the most beneficial move. While settling credit card balances early can positively impact your credit, there are potential drawbacks to consider when it comes to other types of loans, like car or personal loans. Lenders usually charge an early payoff fee. Why? This fee is a penalty for repaying the loan before the agreed time. The rationale is straightforward. Lenders expect to earn interest throughout the loan. An early repayment deprives them of that expected revenue. Beyond potential fees, the other aspect to consider is your credit score. A significant portion of your FICA score, 35% to be exact, is determined by your payment history. This history reflects how regularly and reliably you've managed to pay off your debts. When you consistently pay off your loans, it builds a record that you are trustworthy when managing debts. However, if you decide to repay a loan early, this continuous record gets shortened. Instead of having a 5-year history of one-time payments, you might only have 2 or 3 years if you pay off early. While the early settlement can feel like a smart move for your finances, and in many ways it is, you need to understand how this affects your credit score, as this could limit potential improvements over time. Well, that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.